You want your LS to make even more power? Check out the Rotrex. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. We got something really cool for you today. We have the installation and dyno test of a Rotrex supercharger kit on our 5.3 liter Tahoe. We're gonna run it intercooled, we're gonna run it non-intercooled, and find out how much power the Rotrex supercharger makes on this stock Tahoe. Take it away, Jimmy. All right, guys, who's ready to install a supercharger on the Tahoe? Uh, Rotrex has partnered with us and they sent us a supercharger kit and asked us to give it a, a whirl on here and test it out. So we're going to do an install on this and we'll have the results here shortly. First off came the turbo kit. All right, courtesy of Summit Racing, we have the required ATI super damper for the supercharger install. Okay, that's the belt. Nice. All right, ready to rock. All right, I wanted to touch on the instructions for the Rotrex install. Man, these, these instructions are actually really nice. They're very simple. Diagrams are good. Instructions are easy to follow. QR codes. I mean, it's, it's good stuff. Actually pretty impressed with it. Didn't take very long um, to do the install. Overall, a good experience. All right, oil system for the Rotrex. We have their cooler up front, mounted that up here in the grill. Uh, it would be better to have it up against the condenser so it's pulling air as the fan's moving, but because we're just using this on the dyno, it's gonna work perfectly fine for short pulls. Nice reservoir with a sight glass, lets you know whenever fluid is pumping, has a filter, and then it has this pump, which is awesome. So before you fire it up, you can prime the system, make sure it's full of oil in the supercharger, get some of it over here into the condenser, and, or not the condenser, but the, the heat exchanger, and then back into the reservoir. Really thought out system. Okay guys, let's jump right in and find out how well the Rotrex supercharger performed on our basically bone stock 5.3 liter in our Tahoe. Remember, a lot of the testing I do is on the engine dyno where we're measuring flywheel horsepower. This is measuring wheel horsepower as run on a chassis dyno. It was a Dynocom chassis dyno. And what we did was you'll notice we have two baseline NA power curves here. And the reason for that is if you were to run, just take your stock motor, basically the way that you were driving it, put it on a chassis dyno, you would get varied power numbers. And the reason that the NA power output varies is because the computer is controlling timing. And it's doing that based on a number of different sensors. Like it's taking a look at the air temperature, the water temperature, the octane of the fuel. Is it getting detonation? Am I getting spark knock? Am I retarding the timing? It's going to do all that stuff. And so you may get different power outputs 
registered on a dyno on a stock untuned motor you know is it going to make lots of power is the water temperature hot is the air temperature hot am i getting knock counts is it pulling timing so if you run one like totally stock it's not unusual to see something that's in the 230 to 235 horsepower at the tire range but what we did was we put e85 fuel in this thing and tune this thing so that we could have enough timing and make decent power. And we were able to get as much as two or a little over 250 horsepower and 292 foot pounds of torque after we tune this thing. So you get to pick which one of those things you think is a, is a reliable NA stock power output. And then we added the Rotrek supercharger. Once we did that, Jimmy got everything installed, as you saw in the video put the thing on he hooked the discharge tube up from the supercharger directly to the throttle body no intercooler in there we did as you saw in the video jimmy hooked up a basically cold air intake because that's very important especially on a non-intercooled application make sure you have cold air going into the supercharger and then it will therefore be colder as it goes into the motor now the the supercharger obviously at boost there's going to be an increase in charge temperature but the colder air is going in, the colder the air will be coming out. You can see once we added the Rotrek supercharger, we got a big change in power output as we would expect. The power output jumped to 356 horsepower and 365 foot-pounds of torque. And the reason for that is that we had a rising boost curve. You'll notice on the NA power outputs, we had, you know, 250 horsepower and 292 foot-pounds. We were making a lot more torque than we were horsepower. That's pretty typical of a bone stock 4, 8, 5, 3, or 6 liter. It makes more torque than horsepower. And once you add a camshaft to it, you can obviously shift that around a little bit. But we saw a big change once we added the centrifugal supercharger because it has a rising boost curve. What it's doing is it's enhancing the top end power, basically, of our combination. And because it did that, you could see our, our peak horsepower and our peak torque numbers got closer together. Still did very well. 356 horsepower, 365 foot-pounds of torque. The peak boost level was about 11 pounds at the horsepower peak. And in typical centrifugal supercharger fashion, it continued to rise with engine speed. But because this thing doesn't have a cam, you know, it would continue to rise if we had a good camshaft in it. Now let's take a look and see what happens when we added the inner. Okay, now let's take a look and see what happens when we added our air and water intercooler. This was actually the air and water intercooler that we run on our turbo stuff on the Turbo Tahoe. And we just adapted it. Basically, Jimmy just left it in place and then ran the discharge from the Rotrek supercharger into the discharge tube and then down into the air and water intercooler, which is mounted down below the bumper, and then back up into the throttle body. And then we have a you know, a pump and a reservoir and heat exchanger running through that. When we did a bunch of the testing on the turbo stuff, we basically just hooked a hose up to it and, and circulated the water as a constant loss thing, turning it on only like right before the runs. But then we had a setup done basically so that it would be driven around and we could run the thing under boost with circulating water and, and cooling it off. And this worked very well. And as you can see, from having the intercooler versus not having the intercooler we picked up quite a bit of power it looks like about 20 horsepower peak was up to 375 horsepower torque is also way up by about you know 20 foot pounds or so 387 foot pounds of torque the nice thing about this and this this by the way is also with no change in timing we didn't allow it to change timing 
based on charge temperature so we wanted to see what effect the intercooler had and obviously it had a positive effect we're, we're knocking you know at, at this kind of power level we're probably knocking between 90 and 100 degrees out of the charge temperature which is secondarily beneficial obviously we're making more power which is good but also we're making the thing safer because at a lower charge temperature this thing will tolerate you know, different octane fuel before we start getting, you know, not counts from the factory ECU. So with an intercooler, you'd be driving around and not getting into detonation. And then so it would allow you to basically make more power. The factory system would allow the timing to still be there without, you know, retarding the timing based on the not counts. The other thing that happens with the intercooler, and this is something that we like, is this thing is way more consistent. So if you make a cold run, let's say with a supercharger hooked up, and this works with the turbo as well, if you have the Rotrex supercharger non-intercooled and you make a run, especially if you make a cold run, you'll get a fairly decent peak number, but subsequent runs, the power will drop. And with an intercooler, you make a run and then you make another run and the power stays consistent with the intercooler because the charge temperature stays consistent. You know, we basically with this intercooler have an excess amount of cooling. So we constantly have the same charge temperature going in there. We again, like with the non-intercooled version, have a good cold air system set up to go into the Rotrex supercharger. We again had a rising boost curve, still making peak power at like the 5500 range or so still with a rising boost curve typical of all of these types of superchargers the the rotrex worked very well obviously it liked having the intercooler in place and you know we made lots of power now let's check out and see what the difference was between our na baselines and our combination with the intercooler okay guys here is the power difference between our naturally aspirated 5.3 in the tahoe this is a 2005 like i said just bone stock except for the injector upgrade and the fuel pump upgrade and this is the combination naturally aspirated at 250 horsepower at the tire and again remember that's a tuned combination so if you have a non-tuned basically stock combination that you're putting this road tracks on you're going to start down closer to 230 or somewhere in the mid 230s and the power gains offered by the Rotrex supercharger are going to be even higher and we've got 375 horsepower and 386 foot pounds of torque it's also worth noting that these Rotrex superchargers are available through the guys at Texas Speed and Texas Speed has run this kit with this particular supercharger and at over a thousand horsepower so the supercharger is capable of a lot of power it's just that we're not spinning it very fast and we're also running it on a combination that's all stock. <laughs> this thing at the least needs a low buck truck camshaft or a truck camp, a truck plus camshaft or something even bigger that will allow this combination to make power at a higher engine speed. Cause remember, even you'll get power gains from adding a camshaft, let's say or ported heads or different intake manifolds allow this thing to rev higher. But as you do that, you're going to take advantage of more and more boost and more and more flow from the supercharger because both of those things increase with engine speed. We want to thank the guys at Rotrex for helping us out and let us test one of their combinations. The supercharger worked great. You guys, as I said, go check out the guys at Texas Speed and Rotrex. Lots of cool stuff there. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And we'll keep testing.